been about two months since my last agent tier list, but there's been some changes to the meta and most importantly, Clove has been added to the game. Now, my tier list is going to use the exact same thought process as before. This is not for pro players. This does not account pro play whatsoever, or at least very little. And it's much more for the average player across the ranks, iron up to immortal, even ascendant. I'll peek it more at ascendant, but I've talked to a lot of high ranks. Luckily, thanks to my discord server, I have access to a lot of players. So I discuss it. I look what other people are saying. And of course I look at the statistics, the pick rates, the win rates, etc. And there's definitely some substantial changes compared to my previous tier list. Starting with a familiar face, I won't linger on anything in which there isn't any substantial changes. So starting with Sage, for example, I still believe she's in D tier. Regardless, even pro players are putting her in D tier. Again, she's subject to tons of nerf over nerf without ever being picked. Like in the mid rank, let's say you're playing, you know, silver to plat, especially, you know, if you pick up Sage on split, it's not a throw, but still, regardless, in the vast majority of situations, she remains in D. Next up, we have Breach. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to leave my boy here in D. There's some arguments to be made that he could be C tier, and I know a lot of people weren't exactly happy in the comments section. But, I, and I understand, if you're somehow a good iron breach, the iron enemies can't react, but the same way your iron teammates can't play off of you. And the problem is breach really only is viable when he's a main and picked in like a mortal plus where you'll synergize with your team. And even then, even then in solo queue, it is way too unreliable. So for all those factors that aren't even his own, breach has to stay in D tier. Moving on from there, we've got deadlock. She's staying in D tier for countless reasons. She is just over overall way too weak and she isn't a strong enough sentinel on her own in order to fill the role properly across all ranks she's just not good she is way too underpowered she falls off even more like a truck in the mid to low ranks both pick rate and win rate wise the last D tier slot goes to the one and only ISO, the worst duelist in the game. Officially the worst duelist in the game, completely overshadowed by every single duelist in the game. Like this dude is just unreliable. Let's leave it at that, unreliable. And if you really think about it, one of his biggest key factors like the shield is only even usable after you get a kill and then aim lab aim bot. I mean, Clove can auto heal now. We've got Reyna who just sucks up the orb, but this guy, you still got to hit the aim lab after getting the initial kill. So now it's relying on double the aim and that brings him down even more if you think of the lower the ranks get, right? Because the aim becomes even more unreliable. And then even if you factor pro play, still all the pro players are putting him in D tier. So overall, the overwhelming oppression on this character is insane. Riot's got to do something. I think he's, I think he's actually the worst character in the game. Even I even think Sage, Breach, Deadlock all have more potential than ISO. I'll go ahead and say it. But let's be a little bit more positive as we move into the C tier, I would like to bring back Phoenix. In my previous video, Phoenix was D, just for some context. And you know what? That was unfair. ISO, he can't be in the same category as ISO because ISO is literally worse than him. Phoenix, in my opinion, is a solid C. And because he's quite a simple duelist, I would believe the iron up until plat ranks are kind of carrying this, this like ranking quite heavily because you can play Phoenix really proficiently in gold. Like, like it or not, you can hard carry in gold with Phoenix. Like he's got all the basic mechanics, but isn't too overwhelming, allowing you as a player to be more reliable reliable with the self heal, blocking vision, mollying spike, flashing consistently, all of that just helps a lot, right? Unlike your, you don't got to bounce it spe specifically, the flash will curve for you. So his simplicity does bring him up. And I think I was unfair with Phoenix in my last video. He isn't overwhelmingly amazing, but he is a solid C, even his ult, especially post buff. You know, once you get killed, you come back with full shield and stuff. He, he would even be B tier, but he still is reliant a little bit with some teamwork, you know, having someone watch your ult, getting a pick and playing off of your alt. I know everyone is, but I would say Phoenix just a little bit more than other duelists just isn't as self-sustaining. So you'll stay in C tier, but it's a good bump up from the previous video. Harbor remains in the exact same spot as my previous video on C tier, just because he is way too hard to play reliably. It is the truth. You have to play him perfectly to get anything out of his kit. And even then there's just better controllers in the game. His ult is almost useless. You'll end up hitting your own team often. They don't know how to capitalize on the site. I don't even know how to capitalize on the site because 
because that's how difficult it is. Even high ranking players tend to agree with my thinking here and also just the walls self slowing your team, self debuffing. It'll just get chaotic. You will, you will, you are way more likely to mess up the way you should be smoking, end up smoking off your team, slowing your team, not being able to capitalize on your ability. So actually using him proficiently is way too difficult, but you know, the top, top echelon, the ascendant plus who do main harbor, bringing him up from D tier. He isn't absolutely trash, but he's, eh. He's, he's a good C. He's, he's just, just C. Sticking on theme with controllers. Oh man, I feel bad, but Astra definitely C tier. And I feel it's even worse now with Clove release. And I'll explain more once we get to Clove. But Astra is definitely an easy C. And to be honest, because if you don't live, breathe, and main Astra and fully utilize her, she falls into the same issue that I do sound like a broken record. But if you can't master and proficiently use her kit and combo with your team, because a lot of times it comes from callouts, comboing with your team, etc., to make her proficient, she's just not going to find much value. And to be honest, even in the best of hands, most people will agree maximum she's B tier. So it takes like the top 1% who are IGLing, calming, and comboing to make her like B or A minus. So for the vast majority of us, she's easily a C tier, maybe even D, but we'll give her like C minus for now because she still does find its own value, but you do have to have good game knowledge to make it happen. What's funny is I talk about the average ranks here, and I even mainly are skewing to solo queue or maximum duo queue within this list. And a lot of people did and didn't disagree with this next one. I'm leaving Reyna in C tier. There's a lot of agents that are moving up to B tier. Let me get to them. But Reyna, in my opinion, I, I actually thought about it for a while. Then I talked to a few people and I continued to think about Reyna for a little while. And the reason Reyna tends to sometimes get skewed, as in I will say C tier and you'll get upset, is because you've had those Reynas that are absolutely dominating your game, right? They completely just shit on everyone and she becomes so oppressive and annoying to play against and I have those games as well it's a Reyna that's continuously headshotting jumping around no one can kill her one of us get her 140 all of a sudden she's full healed again and yes it is a headache but truth be told you either you're you'll have those games you are your rank let's say your diamond and you have those games but the problem is she's way too inconsistent so the minute you're missing your shots the minute you're not on top of your game your agent has become useless and there's a reason that Reyna's win rate isn't through the roof because the main people playing Reyna and continuously can dominate with high win rates are Smurfs. And if you are a Smurf, L, but also makes sense because you'll be able to consistently dominate the lobby, meaning consistently oppress the enemy team. But for the average player, you're coin flipping way too hard on your performance. It's much better to play an agent where you can still find value, still find control, still find information, maybe calm for your team than only having to rely on Reyna. But hey, if you maxed out that one stat, you want to be the one trick Andy only aim no brain then you know c plus maybe b minus rain is kind of in this weird location where it is way too player dependent last but not least in the c tier is neon oh neon i almost moved neon up to b tier but uh i i don't think she deserves b tier i'm not gonna lie i think she's about the same as phoenix so i wanted to keep them in the same category because they have a lot of simul similarities here except the fact that neon skews towards skill i i praise phoenix for his simplicity hers is with skill and then the lack of skill on the opponent team. What I mean here is Neon actually in the mid ranks can be very proficient if you can get your movement up because players have a harder time tracking. Meaning if you're that Neon slipping and sliding around, it can be hard to get one dink by the opponent opposing team who are just spraying and praying. So like silver, gold, and even plat, she can actually be very proficient and maybe even B or A tier depending on how good your Neon is. But for the vast majority of people when they're playing Neon, they don't get to master her enough and she ends up having these inconsistencies. If you aren't on top of your game with movement, really what does Neon have? Because that sprint is what makes her special. The wall to block sights, the stun, all of them are just subpar compared to other agents. So what makes her her is that sprint. And if we only isolate the sprint, I think you can understand where I'm coming from. You gotta master it and be super consistent to find value or else you start slipping through the cracks a little. As we move on to B tier, a lot of these changes are thanks to you guys. You guys mentioned a couple comments on disagreeing these two were very proficient and a lot of times came up then i talked to some players thought about it and i genuinely do agree so first person in v tier is gecko up from c tier in my previous video i did not give gecko enough credit and i actually apologize because now when i started to think about it, i'm like damn i'm really stupid because gecko in a pure solo queue sense in the mid range like low to mid range ranks is actually very great he's quite self-sustaining you have a ton of 
options, you can reuse your abilities, and if the enemies aren't controlling where your orbs are, you are more likely to be able to pick them up. So the lack of skill on the opposing allows Gecko to be a lot stronger. They ignore Wingman a little bit more often. You get your plant or diffuse off more often. They get pressured easier, right? You throw Wingman onto the spike, and they are more likely to get pressured, especially in like silver, gold, platinum, even diamond. So I, I actually feel bad. I think Gecko is very strong. He falls off like like a cliff ascendant plus, but like at the same time. Who cares? I don't care about Ascendance. You care about Ascendance? I don't care about it. We're talking about the mid ranks, the average viewer, and hopefully that makes this video a little bit more interesting. The second agent to be upgraded and meet us over in the B category is no one else but Fade. I gave Fade C tier uh, last video. Same idea to Gecko, actually. I'm going to be one to one. I'm trying not to repeat myself. It's almost one to one with Gecko. I was a little bit stupid because Fade's eye and all her other abilities can get capitalized a little bit more when the opponents aren't positioning as well shooting them out as much etc etc and i think fade is also very reliable actually gecko takes quite a lot of skill to fully master and this is the truth with fade as well but if you learn a couple eye lineups that's all you really need right the dog you get the general direction it'll chase the rest the alt is a very wide aoe like even gecko you have to aim a little bit more the alt here is a very wide aoe and it's very easy to capitalize on it i'm alting go in the odds of you hitting your own team compared to breach a lot less and overall i think she's actually quite a reliable pick and initiator if fade is is your main it does make a lot of sense especially in the mid ranks next b tier agent is actually chamber i think chamber is in an okay spot he's not the strongest and i think a lot of people would argue him in c tier and i can kind of understand why i mean his utility overall to your team is kind of unfair for me to put reyna in c tier and not chamber however i think he slid slight like just slightly is like b minus just because he does have his traps down and if you do get really good at chamber unlike reyna you can actually actually be anchoring points as a sentinel should using the op or the sniper plus teleport so this is my consensus on chamber you can agree or disagree that's fine if you're really good at the operator plus his ultimate then he is like a b minus if you get really good with his headhunter genuinely really good with his headhunter he'll go b plus and the reason here is just because if you get really good with the operator like reyna you got to be consistent with aiming but with his alt and the operator you can be a body shot andy and i think you can be a little bit more consistent consistent with that type of aiming and your positioning than you can be with just holding down w so that's why i put him a little bit above but i just want to make it clear i feel like chamber hovers between b and c it's also very player dependent but if you want to double down especially with the snipers we now have the outlaw as well as the marshal like the outlaw is pretty much useless and we don't see gameplay on it but with chamber it actually kind of makes sense and the marshal is a really great eco that complements chamber a lot so all those little things to me just kind of put him a little bit towards the b category the next B tier agent is KO, and I think this is a very fair spot for KO. He's like right in the middle of the pack, and it makes a lot of sense because KO is not the absolute easiest to use. Truth is, it's a little bit player dependent like a lot of the other agents, but not nearly as much. You get proficient with his flashing, learn a few pop flashes, learn a couple lineups with the, with the knife, and especially the gold up, so let's say gold to diamond and some ascendant. Now you're talking a little bit more on gathering information, playing off your team while suppressing without it being overcomplicated like breach right you still got to play with your team when you suppress as ko using his ult you still have to but it's not nearly as over complicated which brings him up to b tier in my opinion and i think he's just a decently well balanced agent as we move over to the a tier like man this list is quite different than the last list i'm not gonna lie i, I might get some i might some ruffle some feathers i'm not gonna lie all right the first a agent is yoru i'm bumping him up from b tier especially as this list specifically i thought everything a little bit more with solo or duo Q in mind. That's why. I thought a little bit more with that mindset and I thought a little bit more in the mid ranks than the low and high ranks. So with all that being said, I actually think Yoru is an A tier agent, man, but I main Yoru. So it's a bias. It is 100% bias, but I do believe that Yoru, if you get very good at him, there's a lot of things that I called, called them, I called them like forced thinking. So for example, if you were to clone just using the audio cue, it basically forces the enemy to think unless they know where the clone's coming from beforehand. If you fake TP and they don't see the fake tp it forces anyone it doesn't matter what rank to think truth is i agree with a lot of the comments from my previous video they said that i over buffed the low ranks as i i think he's too proficient in iron bronze and a lot of people said no because they tend to ignore or they don't really care about the fakes they don't care about the uh the tps etc and you know what i'm gonna agree with you i actually think he's stronger in the mid to high tier diamond ascendant as a solo player if you actually want to main and learn all his tech you can basically 
change up the way you play every single round. So I'm going to say he's B tier, but A if you want to put in the hours, because quite literally on defense, on attack, on an every map, you can change up round to round how you commit with or without your team, be it lurking and then cycling back, being at map control, being positioning, especially if you learn the TP tech, which I highly recommend. I genuinely think his, his it's his versatility that brings him to A tier, but we're going to say he is a B tier, C if you're bad and A tier if you want to put in the hours. I think it's very contingent that I say is A based off of the hours you're willing to put. Next up in the A tier, I'm actually putting Sky. So Sky has been moved from S tier down to A tier. This was thanks to her nerf two months ago, removing stuff like the fake flash. And basically my thinking is anything that removes the ability to vary your playstyle inherently is a big nerf. Like it or not, Valorant and humans just in general work off of rhythm, right? If you go A, B, A, B, naturally the enemies start going A, B, A, B because we work off of picking up patterns. And anytime an agent is nerfed by directly removing a playstyle option, let's say like fake flashing, it's actually a massive nerf, but that's not the main reason she went from S to A. It's all the other nerfs as well, including the duration, how far it can go, etc., etc. She's still very strong though. This is still an A tier agent. Even with all those nerfs, Sky is still very reliable across all ranks and you don't have to put too much hours to understand her basics, but then she has a high skill ceiling still, meaning as you climb the ranks with Sky, you get better and you can keep up. So yeah, overall, she's still an A tier agent without a doubt. Next up, we have Brimstone. So Brimstone, I put in B tier last uh, two months ago. I actually believe he's A tier. And the biggest reason is because I believe I underestimated his simplicity. Brimstone has a very simple simple kit, but doesn't fall victim to the issues let's say Phoenix does by also having a simple kit. When you throw down those smokes, like it or not, they're landing where you put them and they are doing their job well. When you throw down your stim beacon just to rotate even as a solo player, you are moving across the map much, much faster. Like really the only reason Brim is in B tier for a lot of people when, when I was listening to other tier lists is just because Breeze is in the rotation and he is not good at on Breeze, right? You're losing the stim value, you don't got enough smokes, etc., which makes sense. But outside that shitty map, if you really think about it, it. Brim is simplicity is what makes him strong. No matter if you're Ascendant or you're Gold, as you improve your game knowledge, you inherently improve your Brimstone gameplay, which is actually fantastic. Sometimes when you're just focused on playing the game, you want to focus on improving your game knowledge. Having a kit that simply just works, you don't got, it's much harder to mess up your ability usage on Brim actually makes him inherently stronger. So I'm moving him from B to A. That's my thinking. Next up, we got to talk about Clove. Oh my goodness. All right. Clove was a hard one because I was thinking about Clove for a while and same idea. I talked to a few people. I believe genuinely Clove is an A tier agent. My first reaction was S, but you know, I got brought back down to earth mainly because of their alt. Clove's alt is a little bit too random and a little bit too weak to the point where I almost put Clove in B tier only because of the alt. Because if you really think about it, if the enemy is predicting your alt plays close, pushes you, you cannot run away fast enough to utilize that alt. But if you actually put hours in Clove and start thinking about when you have the alt, for example, playing post plants from a greater distance to be able to back up and actually play time. That's pretty good. But even then you play from too far, then they run away and your alt ends up expiring. So I don't know. Clove's alt is very, very, very weak. And right now all I'm doing is bringing Clove down. However, the reason I believe Clove is an A minus, maybe a B plus, but I'm going with A minus is because of everything else in the solo sphere. If you're playing a controller aggressively like Clove, being able to self heal checks out heavily as a solo queue agent, being able to mess up, but then still be consistent, AKA smoking after death is massive. Meaning in, let's say gold, let's say gold, plat, silver, diamond, whatever. You are executing on a site. As long as there's some basic monkey brains, as in you do execute on a site, but you end up flipping the, you know, you mess up, you fumble the ball, you execute on site, but then you die, you get picked too early. As long as the execution on site still happens, your, your smokes are still available. They are still there. You are getting less punished, which is one of the biggest things in the mid ranks, especially like the fact that you get inherently less punished is massive for Clove. And the more you play Clove, of course, the better you get. Clove does enable the entire kit to play very aggressive, including smoking up close, holding your hollow smokes, similar to why Omen is so strong in solo queue. And it's a big comparison. I'm going to go ahead and drop, right? Like Omen last tier list was S tier and we'll get to Omen in this tier list, but uh, you know, Clove shares 
a lot of what makes Omen strong in this solo queue, so I genuinely believe that they're A. I, that's my opinion. The next A tier agent is Jet. Now, Jet is just overall a mixed bag. You gotta get good at Jet, but similar to Chamber, you get really good at that operator. You get really good at those snipers. The, 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 the pick and dash is still available, but then there's a lot more versatility, right? You can make space. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy myself from the last video. She was also A tier there. If you just smoke, dash in, create space, you're already doing a lot of what Jet's value come from. Then you get good at aim. You get consistent on changing up your positioning, both vertically and horizontally. Jet overall is still very, very versatile. She isn't considered the strongest agent overall, but I still think she's a strong solo queue duelist, especially there's a lot of jet mains who find a lot of success for obvious reasons. She's just overall very reliable once you've started to put a lot of hours on her. The next A tier agent is Sova. And I mean, Sova, Sova is a little bit map dependent, of course, but overall such a solid initiator. And I actually don't think we see enough Sova in the lower to mid ranks, but if you you just want to put some hours on Sova unlike improving just your raw aim that comes with time there's a lot of there's just a lot of knowledge online right you can actually study Sova understand each map some good lineups and then when you understand why those lineups are good you can improve your game sense on Sova rapidly also there's just a lot of consistency he isn't overly hard to master and once you start understanding the most basic darts they are impactful. That's the thing. You put in a little bit of time. It's not as crazy amount of hours compared to other agents, but you put in a little bit of time and you have an agent that is remarkably impactful to some extent pro players and a lot of high ranking players will say that he is a must on certain maps or else you lose. That's how impactful Sova is. Now this is where my list starts getting tossed up aggressively compared to my previous list. We're going to be moving on to the S tier agents and there's just quite a few new ones up here. So let's start with the obvious one, Viper. Viper is S tier. Viper consistently gets hounded on to be nerfed and Viper is S tier to the point that even if we want to bring in pro plays, her pick rate is insane up there. So across all ranks, if you want to learn Viper, you learn the basics across map knowledge. That's the only thing about controllers. Map knowledge is very important and Viper is S tier and especially with Breeze in the rotation, that alone brings her up even more. So yeah, Viper remains S tier. She's extraordinarily strong across the board and every single thing in her kit has value. There is basically zero weak spots on Viper. The next S tier agent is Raze. She has what Reyna and Neon have, you know, with the high mechanic movement that you can curb stomp everyone, but then just brings more value to the table across the board with consistency. You can be more consistent on Raze overall. However, it is still mechanically dependent. With that being said, if you were to take all the agents and put the best mechanics across with them in solo queue, Raze can just curb stomp so hard and be a little bit more consistent while doing so. For example, Reyna, you miss the aim. You're kind of just shit out of luck. Your abilities are useless minus your blind. Well, with Raze, force that entry by double satcheling and pulling out that alt and just the <laughs> just the voice line of that alt pushes back the teams, right? So even if you're not top, top dog performance, boom bot to clear. Now you're helping clear corner and gather information. Force yourself onto site. Now you're gaining space. She just has all the upsides of curb stomping like Reyna and Neon while having the consistencies of someone like Jet. So in my opinion, Raze is an easy S tier. Some people even want her nerfed. I don't even think she needs to be nerfed. I think she just somehow somewhat balanced S tier. The last agent that was both S tiers on both lists is Omen. Omen is extremely great. He's, he's universally um, just agreed upon still remains up here an S tier controller to carry yourself through rank. Now, I actually thought Clove might beat Omen just because of the self heal, but then their terrible ult kind of brings them back down where Omen, you can do a lot of cool stuff with the ult. It could be as simple as picking up the spike. Now that's simple, you know, quick rotates. It's a lot of, it's very versatile, you know, lurks, flanks, etc. You You get, you get rewarded a lot for map knowledge on Omen. You can still play aggressive with those TPs, hold very weird spots and then get out after duck back into cover so omen overall you know when it comes to mind fucking the enemies still playing your control role good high skill ceiling but not too hard to pick up he kind of checks a lot of the boxes and for all those reasons and a lot more
more remains in S tier. Now the next two agents I'm bringing from A tier up until S tier. And to be honest, it's me doubling down on the thought process of solo queue. So the first one is Cypher. I had Cypher in A tier and I actually believe he is S tier. Now Cypher, the only thing that maybe hovers in between A and S is just like knowledge, like map knowledge and skill. But at the same time, that's what I said last time, and I don't think it checks out fully because unlike, again, aim and stuff that take a lot of hours, you can go into a custom, learn some setups, understand where you should be holding by watching some videos online, and mimic it a lot easier. Like, you could watch Tens play Jet and have him updraft and five headshot. You don't go into a custom and mimic that. That doesn't make any sense. With Cypher, you can see some really strong and annoying, but go ahead and do it, rat plays, understand why they're impactful, and then maybe practice your positioning and setups in a custom and find a lot of value. Value. That's just the truth. He's an S tier in the pro play and high ranks, and there's no reason you can't mimic what makes him strong down in your rank. Because even if you're alone on site, like you have a lot of solo power to hold sites and make sure at least your site isn't getting dominated. So I really like Cypher. And on the flip side, Killjoy from A tier up until S. I don't know why I put Killjoy in A tier. I always liked Killjoy. I think I said A++ or something in the last one because Killjoy is everything that Cypher has, but then simpler. You can learn some setups, same idea, but they're easier to set up, quicker to rotate and pull out, and also just a lot easier to find value. Peeking with your turret, playing off of your turret. In the lower ranks, people have trouble fighting your turret, uh, less likely to clear your freaking mollies on this bomb, even though now it's very obvious in the higher ranks still. And then even on top of that, if you plant in a certain spot and then hide the trips where they can still do damage, because because, you know, they go through objects, still delays the spike as they search for them. There's just a lot of things. There's just a lot of things. Killjoy is so strong for so many reasons. And I don't even think I have to explain it because people who hate Killjoy are nodding their head. People who love Killjoy are nodding their head. High ranks are nodding their head. Low ranks are nodding their head. Killjoy is definitely an easy S tier. Cypher and Killjoy, Sentinel wise, just kind of dominate everything else in this game. I mean, look at this tier list. Look where all the Sentinels are. Insane. Absolutely insane. Do you agree? Disagree? It is still heavily partial to my opinion. You guys enjoyed the last video. Fellow mid rank player, represent, and yeah, go enjoy ranked. Bye.